Good morning, folks. It's August 17, 2024. I'm on the upper end of the Grand. I'm going to do some catfishing, but I'm going to do some dragging today. I've been fishing and uh, anchored up, but today I'm going to do some dragging. I, uh, uh, it's that time of year. Uh, the fish are off the nest and they're out roaming and feeding. Water temperature is high. I think the water temperature... 82 degrees, 82.6, I think. But uh, I haven't done any dragging this year. It's my first time, and uh, I've kind of missed it. So I'm going to do something different. I'm just out here on a great big flat, not very deep, uh, probably eight feet at the very deepest, starting out about four feet deep. So we're just going to drag out across this flat. There's some little ditches and, and uh, depressions and, and humps, and uh, we're going to see what happens. I'm going to run four rods all on planer boards. I got some spread them planer boards. I'm using a Santee Cooper style rig. Got a float, uh, dragon weight. I'm going to run two head pieces and two body chunks. We're going to just put them out and see what happens. I'm going to start out running about 0.6 miles an hour. Uh, we'll adjust from there, slow down or speed up, see what they want. The way I use planer boards is I've got a clip on the front that I can pop the line out of and then i got a clip on the back that's got a little pin in it that will trap that line and it will not come off. That way if I get a fish on I can pop that board so it reverses and I'm not fighting against the board but the board will stay on and then I'll reel it up, take the board off and then land the fish. Some people like to put a, cl uh, a clip on the back so that when you pop it off the front, the board slides down the line and goes to the fish. You don't have to mess with taking it off. I don't like that. I like it this way better. I don't like that board down by my fish when I'm trying to land it. It's just a matter of personal preference. Some people say the way I do it when you're taking that board off, there's a chance that you're going to uh, lose your fish, and that's probably true but that's just the way I like to do it. Put my outside boards out of ways first and then I'll put my uh, inside boards on. Just cast out enough line that I know my bait will always be on the bottom. No matter how deep water I'm fishing in, like I said, this water's shallow, so you don't have to have much line out. Those planer boards get those baits out away from the boat in this shallow water. I think that's important because the boat will spook the fish. In the deeper water, I don't know that it makes that much difference, frankly. Uh, but you can get your baits spread out more, obviously, using the planer board. So we got them out. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. He took it. Yep. Yep. I thought I saw some fish out there on the side imaging. He hit it. I don't know if you can see it or not, how that uh, got this camera in the way. But how that board pops and turns around backwards so I'm not fighting the board. And then I'll reel it up here. I'll keep tension on that fish. Take that board off. It's important to keep tension on that fish while you're doing that. Let's see, that was on a headpiece. Got two headpieces, two body chunks. Come on, baby. It doesn't feel all that big, but it's there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's a nice little blue cat. Nice little. Under the slot eater fish, as we call it. Well, he took it too. I mean, he wasn't getting off. 
you got to clear out of the mouth back in the forehead there we go there we go these B and M hooks they get them they get them there you go nice little blue cat first one of the day I'll show you this rig I'm using like I said, it's a Sandy Cooper style rig in that I got a flow or weight, dragon weight, and I come down. It's got a little spinner with a rattle in it, up and it comes up to a demon dragon style bait. And then it's got a little spinner on it behind it. Cody Van Atten at uh, Cody's Bait and Tackle in Warsaw makes these and sells them. Then you come down from that and then you got your hook. And uh, that spinner, I think really, is effective it uh, puts out some flash obviously but it also puts out some bubbles creates some noise this water's pretty muddy up here and i think this makes a difference let's cut us another headpiece what i'm doing really these shad are kind of small so i'm just kind of skinning one side down a ways and then just sort of cutting the tail off so i've got sort of a body and head piece all in one that was on the outside rod so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch places with these two rods Put this on the outside, let a little bit more line out for that to get out there. And we'll put this one on the inside. Just kind of cast it right out back. Get her board back on. Oh, we got a fish over there on that outside board. Oh, I missed it. Gosh dang it. He was pulling her back. Well, no. Is he on there? If he is, he's little. I believe he is. Yeah, he's real little. Oh, got one here now. Unless I got that line, I may have messed around and caught that other line. Wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I'm dragging that other line in. That's why it feels like there's a fish on it. Gosh dang it. Got a tangled mess here. Oh, there is fish on it. <laughs> he got across that other line. All right, all right, here, let me see if I can untangle before I get that fish in. There we go, got that one. Come here. Oh, another good little eater. Yeah, I'll put him down there. I'm gonna get this board back out. Oh, I was putting the board on, wasn't I? I tell you, it got in a little bit deeper water. Started out in six foot of water, no bites across there. We got out here about seven and a half feet deep. I started seeing more fish on the side scan, and we started getting bites. So, makes sense, don't it? All right, let's get this fish up here now. Don't now. That also came on in one of Cody's rigs. I got a couple of Cody's rigs and a couple without the spinners. You may have to put more Cody's spinner rigs on there. They're eating it. Cody's bait and tackle in Warsaw. Get old of Cody. That's a nice rig. Works.
That's on a side piece. They're eating heads and sides. Get another bait. But they're both on the Cody rig, as I call it. All right, we got them all back out. We're in 7.9 feet of water. I'm seeing a lot of fish on the side scan. We're now in eight feet of water. We're approaching a creek channel on the right side and a pump on the left side of the boat. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, he's there. All right. What are we in? We're in about eight feet of water. I'm using my B&M Silver Cat Magnum rods. These are a little stiffer than those uh, bomber rods I like for anchor fishing. I like to have a little stiffer rod when I'm dragging because I'm dragging that board. These are great rods for dragging. Doesn't feel too bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a better fish. Probably better than that, this one. Come on up. Come on up. I don't think he's ready yet. Still got some fight to him. Yeah. That'd be a slot fish, I'd say. Full little drag. There you go, splash. Give it heck. Oh, <laughs> in and out of the net. Oh, same thing. Come on. Come on. God dang it. Well, my net's almost too big for me to handle. Got him. All right. I got him. Look there, it's on the old Cody rig again. They're liking that spinner. Better fish there. Get him out of the net. Right in the corner of the mouth. Let's see, that was on the old head and body piece together. Yeah, there we go. Nice little fish. Let's see how long he is. Yeah, 29 and a half. So he's a slot, he's in the slot. All right, let's see what this little slot fish weighs. Why not? A 
11, six. About 11 and a half pounds. Nice little fish. Nice little fish. All right, turn you loose. Not keeping any fish, couldn't keep this one if you wanted to. On Truman Lake, people ask me, what's that mean, slot fish? On Truman Lake, as far as blue cats are concerned, it does not apply to flatheads or uh, channel cats, but blue cats, if they're between 26 inches and 34 inches, you have to release them. There's a slot, 26 to 34. So when I talk about a slot fish, that means a fish in that range, 26 to 34. If I talk about one under the slot, of course I'm talking about one 26 inches or less, and over the slot, 34 inches. So at any rate, that's what we're talking about when we talk about a slot fish. So let's get this back out. Okay, what are we going here? We're going 0.8 miles an hour. It's speed work for him. We'll just keep doing it. Got hit on this one a while ago. I'm gonna check the bait. Make sure we've got bait. Nope, no bait. Good idea to check them. Hard to catch them with no bait. All right, I don't know if you can see, but I've been just going along this, uh, actually here's my track. Started up here and I came down here and I crossed that creek channel and I came along here. Now I'm crossing it again. I'm gonna cross and probably go out across this flat this way. May cross both depending on what happens when I cross that creek channel. If I get bit, I'm gonna cross it more often. Oh, there we go, there we go. Is it still there? It's on the Cody rig on the outside board, yeah. I believe he is. Come on to this one. small one but he's there oh that's the smallest one ever just came off little bitty blue there's on the Cody rig oh, oh outside board something pulled on it didn't take it we're back up on the flat on the ledge I tell you, I just haven't been bit in the channel. So, seems they're more out on these flats. I'm running the power pole charge battery maintenance system. And it's got an app and I can pull it up. I've been uh, trolling now for a pretty good while. And so I can check the status of my batteries. Every one of them are over 12 volts even after I've been trolling this far. When I crank up the big motor it will start charging those batteries. It's a great system I tell you. I've never found a charger or battery maintenance system better than this uh, power pole charge system. There we go. I don't know if that's hung up or got a fish. We just come through that channel. That's probably creeping up that channel ledge. I think it was just hung up. I tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a move, folks. I've got another area I want to drag, so I'm gonna bring these in. We're gonna make a move. Oh, 
All right, I'm going to put my homemade spinner rig on, which is a little different than Cody's. It's got a spinner in the front. I got a little float that uh, Fred Pittman of Delta's Custom Crappie Cranks painted for me. Got my name on it. Fluorescent yellow. 36 inches long. 9 aught b and George Young Jr. hook. There we go, there we go. It's a good bite there. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Stay on there, baby. Boy, he slammed it. You don't feel all that big. feels better. Yeah. Now he feels a lot better. Come on, don't you go for that motor. Yeah. Don't you go for that motor. Uh, probably ought to net him. He's... He's hooked pretty good. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's a good one. It caught that on the old Mike Baker rig. What do you think about that? Ha! Old Mike Baker rig will work too. He whammied it, I mean. Boy, he's deformed looking. Kind of big head, skinny body. He was hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Just look real quick. He's, oh, he's a slot fish, 27 and a half inches long. 27 and a half. Thank you. Yeah, on the old Mike Baker rig. Fred Pittman float. All right, we're just on a big flat again. We're in eight feet of water. There's a lot of shad out here. A lot of fish out here after them too. I'm going 0.8 miles an hour, sped up a little bit. All right, let's have another slam down like that. Come on, come on. He's trying, he's trying. Come on. There he is, there he is, he got it, he got it. Uh, he got it, he don't feel too bad. He's coming right at me. Oh, he's coming right at me. A little pull to him. Oh yeah, yeah. No monster, but ain't no dink either.
It's on the Cody rig. He liked the Cody rig. Yes, sir. Come on up here. Yeah. Come on up here. Yeah, not too bad at all. Open your mouth. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Well, how in the world did he swallow that circle hook? He's got it down in there a ways, I'll tell you. Can't get it out. I'm going to have to let him have that hook. I don't want to hurt him. It's down far enough. I'm just going to clip the line. And he's going to keep that hook. All right. Here you go. Thank you, buddy. Well, you jump back in the boat. You want in the boat or you want out of the boat? Let's get out. They're biting the old spinner rigs today, going 0.7 miles an hour. Yo, oh, where is he? Yeah, he's on the outside. Felt the vibration, heard it. There he comes. Yeah. Still there. I just getting ready to pull that in and check it for bait. Been out there a while. I guess the bait was okay. What is he? Another eater blue. About like all the others. Better watch where I'm going there. I'm gonna get a little too close. There's no railroad track that runs all the way down through there. Oh come on out. That's on the old Cody bait. The old Cody rig. Splashing it right in the eyeball. Got it. All right. Got it. Another eater sized fish. These are reel them up dragon weights I'm using. Two ounce. You can get them different colors, different sizes, different weights. I mean, I like them. Reel them up. Saw these at my local tackle store there in Columbia. Tombstone Tackle. I like them. Let's check the bait. See if there's something on there. Not gonna fish very much longer. But I'll rebait these two and put them out. Yep, no bait on that one. Hard to catch them when you're fishing on credit. Well, that one's going out. I'm going to pull this one in. Check the bait on it, too. Look at that. No bait on that one, either. You got to check them pretty often. I don't check them near enough. I'm kind of lazy. If I were in a tournament, I'd check them religiously. But just out here fun fishing, I wait too long. Tell you what, folks. It's 12 o'clock noon. 
I'm going to reel them in and call it a morning. You know, we haven't caught any real big fish. We caught a couple slot fish. Decent. Nothing huge. Caught a few good little eaters. It was fun, though. I've enjoyed it. I haven't done this dragon in a while. And uh, it was good to do it for a little change of pace. Different than what I've been doing. I think probably we could have caught more fish and probably better fish anchored up today, but who knows? Till you do it, might not have caught anything. Caught a few, but at any rate, I'm gonna reel them in and I'm gonna go to the house and I'm gonna get some wings and I'm gonna cook them and watch the Chiefs game. Thanks for being with me today. If you enjoyed the video, I hope you'll hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do all those things. I appreciate it, it helps the channel. At any rate, I'm done. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for being with me.